my name is Andra. I am a traditional artist. We're going to make some art. So if you want to see some of that, come follow me along. I've had an idea for a very specific like uh, TikTok that I want to make. So let me show you some of my inspiration. I've done this and this with like the similar utensils and color scheme. And I think they're just the cutest colors ever. So I want to make something um, that's not quite so cute with these colors. And I was thinking if it'll load. So at least when this was um, posted seven years ago, this was like the only footage we had of the Black Devil. Was it? Yeah, the Black Devil um, anglerfish. And it is definite, well, she is definitely not cute. So I'm thinking I am going to take screenshots from this and maybe paint it. And I think that would be hilarious because that's my sense of humor. So yeah. She's very scary. I think that's going to be the main project for now, though I do have a, a really good idea that I want to try. A really interesting idea at least of like um well I'll save that for now and we'll just get started on trying to draw this thing from all these pictures all right so I got a bunch of reference pictures this one's probably the clearest it looks great on my camera screen but it doesn't really look that great um in person and then this one oh, looks really good on my camera screen, but it's really dark. So all of these are kind of blurry and a lot, there's a lot of motion going on. So I can't really get a lot of detail and like understand what it is. So we're going to try to figure that out. So I do not take commissions except for when I do. And when I do, it's only, I only take commissions of beta fish. And they're really hard to take a picture of since they're always moving. So we're going to do it the same way I do those. Which is by tracing it. To try to understand where everything is. At least roughly. What is this? Is this a gill? I think this actually might go past the tail. Another thing I don't understand, this looks short, but in this picture it looks long. There's the tip right there. And take some creative liberties here. Okay, so it is June 1st. I'm still struggling with this, but why don't you join me in my favorite thing to do at the beginning of each month? I got this uh, calendar from Scandy Girl on Instagram. I get one from her every year. This is probably the third year. And I don't look at the art that's in there. Because I already love all her art, so each month is a surprise. So this was May's, and this one is June's. So let's get that back up there. Nice. Little update. Um, still working on the fish, but then I got COVID. Almost all better. But these stickers just came in and I just listed them. And sometimes you just have to make something that you really want. And I really wanted this and I'm going to stick it onto everything. Do you see the elk? 
Yeah. I scared them. <laughs> and up there. What did you doing up there? <laughs> okay, so I just got this from the Creeping Moon. It was a Kickstarter that I backed that she made. And it is a watercolor sketchbook. And check out the spine. Oh, it's so pretty. Let's see if I can get it to focus. And then, then here's the inside. And there's a ribbon in it too, and the pages look so amazing. It's really fancy, and sometimes, like, I'd usually be scared of really fancy sketchbooks, but I am determined to use it. And I think the very first uh, page, I'm going to start out with one of my strengths, and we're going to do a moon, I think. Oh, this is... Maybe we'll skip the first page? Because a lot of times, because that's glued right there. Oh, I don't know what to do. Hello. When was the last time I vlogged? I don't know. But we're going to start from here. So let me show you what I've been working on. Piece. It is a just for fun piece. So now that it's done, I don't know what to do with it. I don't particularly see anyone purchasing it. But I love it. Piece, and I really like the idea of it. But I don't like this. So we might try this again somehow. A little watercolor sketchbook from a Kickstarter from uh, the creepingmoon.co. I'm absolutely positively determined not to be intimidated by my fancy sketchbooks and to actually use them. And I couldn't use the first page because it's glued to this page. So here's that. And I really liked this. My uncle's birthday, so I think I'm going to send him this. I really like this, and it's a lot of fun, so I want to do more. But I kind of want to experiment a little bit. So I drew this, and now I have this. And I kind of want to put more lines so it looks more feathery on top. I'm not sure how it's going to look. So we can do that. And then I think this might be a good watercolor class for in the um So I think this might be a good like back pocket kind of lesson I could do for my art class when I have like when I need a filler class. So I teach 3rd and 4th, 5th and 6th and then I'm middle school and high school together. So it's like I could do a version of this without the trees or maybe without the moon for third and fourth grade. And this can be like fifth and sixth grade and this could be like middle school, high school. Because I teach a little homeschool group and they all appreciate having different uh, projects for each class. They feel more grown up that they didn't do the same project as the little kids. So I'm trying to... Do a little bit of lesson planning this summer. I really can't breathe. <laughs> I have really bad allergies today. I love energy. But I'm like full of energy and I want to get a lot of stuff done. So I'm going to try to ride that high and do as much as possible. This always happens right before I have like a bunch of like stuff I need to do in a row. Like the day before. I also want to hang up some art on the walls, and I haven't done that for two reasons yet. Uh, one of the reasons being that um, a lot of spiders like to hide behind the artwork, and I haven't luckily had much of an issue uh, with spiders recently. So, oh, little pro tip. If you see a spider and you're like, oh, that's fine. She can stay, and she can catch all the bugs. Uh, don't do that. 
She will call all the male spiders to your room and you will have spiders forever. <sighs> the reason being is a lot of my frames are broken. And I haven't really been wanting to go through them. Like this one that fell apart. Well, the artwork in this slipped. And this is the back of it. So, yeah. Where to go? 2017. So it's been, I've been avoiding it because I don't want to see all the broken frames. So the plastic doohickeys on a lot of them have just snapped clean off in half. A little bit more effort and some smart business moves along the way. So I'm going to put down, I'll achieve my income goals for the year. Okay, I think we have a pretty good mix of goals and tasks here. There's a lot of stuff that is business related. There's a lot of stuff that's art related. Pick the platform you love the most or hate the least and run with it. Okay, this as a resource for you. I want you to start building your art career and then being able to look back on all of the videos in this channel to see exactly what I've done. I am not just telling you the roadmap that I'm using right now, but all of the videos on my channel exist as like a real life proof of the roadmap as I develop my career. And that is my comparative advantage, my willingness to share what other creators don't, and my overarching focus on strategy. When I was just starting out, I really wanted information on how much money I could make as an artist, but there weren't a lot of videos out there, especially for the stuff that I wanted to make, so I noticed a gap in the market and I filled it with my own content. And once you've identified your comparative advantage and your identity as an artist and a creator, it's really just a matter of time of making killer content and being patient. It took me six months to reach 100 subscribers here on YouTube and over a year and a half to reach 1,000, but ever since hitting 1,000 in September, my channel's been growing really well ever since. So just stick in there, be patient. But I actually have a little bit of a confession to make because you see, when I mentioned that roadmap before, I've actually been guiding you along this roadmap the entire time. And we're on phase three. Phase one was what I like to call the starting out phase, or more aptly, getting your shit together. You're figuring out how you want to market yourself, be it on social media or some other way, like in person, through conventions or on a blog, and you just start doing it. Phase two is the crucial strategy phase. This is when you're going to want to start developing a coherent plan for your overall marketing strategy. You want to figure out who you are as a creator, who you are as an artist, and what your comparative advantage is for your business. So this is the part where you start thinking about making money. Now there are tons of ways of making money as an artist. You could go the traditional route of having your work in gallery. You can do whatever you want. But that being said, I highly recommend you start out with a couple of passive income streams. Passive income streams are not directly linked to your creative output. You basically make them or set them up once and they make money in the background. This is stuff like YouTube AdSense. It could also be a Skillshare course or digital products. These are easier income streams to set up and they don't require a lot of active work from you after you get them going. This is a really great way to have money trickling in while you keep working on your marketing strategy and start building out other more active income streams that require more attention, like an online shop or trying to get your work in an exhibition or a gallery. Once you have some smaller income streams set up and a little bit here and there trickling in, add in another one, maybe a Patreon or an online shop. Just keep adding income streams, making sure to have a healthy balance of active and passive until you have enough to make ends meet. Okay, this might be starting to sound a little bit overwhelming and like a lot of things to market, but this is where Koji comes in, the sponsor of this week's video. Koji is so much more than just a Lincoln bio service. So they are the best Lincoln bio service for artists, like genuinely, but they are a place where you can have all of your income streams and your entire presence online in one place. It is so easy to organize. It looks great. I have my Twitter, my Instagram, my YouTube channel, uh, my email, my email list. You can send it from my newsletter. I have my workbook there, my Notion templates, my Patreon. Uh, I have, what else? I have a tip jar. I have my affiliate links. I have my website, my online shop. Like, so much of my presence online, my entire presence online, is found on my Koji profile. And 
it isn't just a place where you can have links, you can actually make money from your profile. So you don't have to worry about conversion rates or even having a website, because having a website, let's face it, is actually really expensive um, and it's time consuming to maintain. So you can sell digital and physical products directly on your coaching profile, you can take commissions. <sighs> I put on my shoes and dashed outside so we can look at the sunset and she thinks we're gonna go somewhere. Ah. <sighs>